move the point in between the meeting point the move hour makes the shadows dance along the surface of the sand from the top of its dune the sense of everything shifts turning it liquid or steam Before the yellow expanse, everything's made to live as a breath, growing longer and longer. Move is elsewhere, there, where the horizon blurs under the effect of the damp. Seeking the sky with the tip of her tongue. In the darkness, the gaze is lower. Night falls on move, and with it, the sky. John tells me things from the past, the only things that seem still tangible to him. He told me that he had turned into hair, that he had no substance, no center. His body was no more. Move, a cannibal. Jim tells Move that where he's from, shadows reveal presence. He says that what indicates presence also foretells the arrival of another. Move makes him dizzy. There, where Move becomes alive, Jim and John fall apart. Their gazes unfold. In front of Move opens up to them the darkest night, a landscape with no perspective. this haze that burns their lungs, he said to him, I am breathing with you. Move is in us. Jim takes John at his words and without knowing why, breathes with him. Move within them. He nails and propels the body into thousands of droplets. Like the breath of the whale, she splinters them, and there they float above the sand peaks. Jim and John, the reign of move. As if in suspension above the dunes, leaves their thousand bodies scattered, dispersed, carried by the winds. He 
yellow and purple in turn. They have become the dunes, but also the clouds and the horizon. While most scholars dealt with this on a metaphysical level, Johannes Kepler, a, genem, a German astronomer from the 17th century, whose laws of planetary motion describe the elliptical orbits of the planets around the Sun, believed that they really made music, singing like half-filled wine glasses played with a moistened finger a mixture of religion and science. These spheres sang music of the heavens. According to Kepler, celestial bodies orbited each other at a fixed distance, which corresponded to a specific pitch, in the same way that a string of a certain length on a violin elicits a certain note. these notes were weaved into a pattern of proportion, a divine pattern, determined by the universe. The frequency of each planet is calculated by finding the orbital frequency, its rotation rate, and scaling it up to the audible range. By using instruments tuned to the frequencies, Sound therapists and spiritual healers can tap into the energy of each of the planets, making up our solar system. I wonder what's the weight of the pain that I carry every day and that accompanies me at night. It feels like a donkey sat on my chest sometimes. I shake, I shiver. I'm unsure. Comes in waves just like a fever, a tidal fear, a tidal panic, a tidal puddle of sweat. It has left me alone lately.
I'm sitting here wondering what's coming next. What's the face coming after the death of self? A death of self sounds so serious. Too deep to even understand what are the things to hold on to, not to lose it. Losing what? Losing self. Self lost. Lost. At least not dead yet. I'm learning to be open about my pleasure and to celebrate it. I've come to a point in my life where I had to give up on my expectations and my dreams to accept that I'm a dreamer. So if yesterday's dreams are being removed from me, I'll find some other places for my mind to wander. Is that what people call resilience? Would resilience be a form of reinvention? An endless process of redreaming the dream according to what's left of it. Could resilience equate to settling for less than what we deserve? A float, just barely.
sitting in a living room which I know is occupied by more than I can see. They have witnessed the riots riddling my body and my mind. What is it that we cannot see, but that the flesh feels? Where do we place and hold space for the things that we cannot articulate? Why are we asked to articulate the violence placed upon us? To what end? For whom? What is it that we can not see, but that the flesh feels? An upheaval that has no hand. He realizes that another reality exists within him. A world where water is no more. He realizes that the rain will not come and that the desert will continue to swallow everything up. In this moment, the density of the day is matched by the turmoil of the night. The moon watches him struggle, caught between the desire to be one with reality and to flee from it. We may call it the desire to no longer be flesh. And yet the idea of this death completely annihilates him. He sees it as an end. just like a horizon that would suddenly turn into a wall. No more limbs, just a mass made and unmade by the wind. The hot air would carry him beyond the farthest dunes in the distance where other places take shape. He will never see them he knows that. He also knows that he doesn't need to see them. Slowly, he would learn to dissolve into the air amongst the cloud of this purple and yellow desert. He would become vapor. as if caught in the sickness of the sky, his limbs would melt into the dark mass that would surround them. At night, he would live with those who neither see nor believe. There, he would watch from the shadows without ever being seen. A creature without a visible existence, without reason or virtue, without a soul to raise to the heavens, without a body to ground him to the earth. It would become one of the history's absentees. They too have become a mist. They've become puddles. They've become clouds. With each breath, he would inhabit me 
Allez tout le monde.
existence isn't an individual affair. Individuals do not pre-exist their interactions. This is all about entanglements. To be entangled is not simply to be intertwined with one another, as in the joining of separate entities, but to lack an independent and self-contained existence. I keep on returning, I reappear. I return to the visible, and although I have no body, I still talk. I occupy your dreams and visions. I am a wave and a radiation. I'm a constant back and forth flow of energy of change. I am the lived and accumulated knowledge. I am the other that makes another other familiar. Thank you. <laughs>